Good day to you. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm very thankful that you're listening and uh, that, again, you're giving yourself, giving of your time, um, and that the Lord has given you an interest in anything that's coming through this earthen vessel. I'm very humbled. Um, I want to talk about a few things before I get into what I want to share this morning specifically. Um, real quick, the, the podcast continues to just soar. Um, wherever Kristen has placed um, the accessibility of it, um, the West Coast is just lighting up like crazy um, with listeners, and it's so awesome. It's just really remarkable, this age that we live in. I don't talk about this very much because I'm, I'm not a huge, like, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not a real plugged-in guy as far as, uh, I don't know, you know, Facebooky type stuff. <laughs> I'm so ignorant I can't even think of what, what we call it. I know I'm not that, that ignorant, but um, just this electronic world we live in. <laughs> Maybe I'm more ignorant than I care to admit. But it just blows my mind that things I record as I'm driving along in this truck, um, in this area of the world, or standing in my barn with a podium and an audience of livestock, that that, that can actually make it. I mean, we've, we've had very minimal, albeit, we've had a few international listeners starting to pop up here and there. And it just blows my mind that someone in Brazil has listened to what I record on this little recorder. How amazing is that? It really is the, it's really the example of, to me now, of why it's necessary for us to speak out of the word of our testimony. That, that it is something. It is something of substance, and it can, especially in this age, go out to the ends of the earth. It's, that's literal. And that just really, it just really humbles me, reminds me, um, of my smallness, yet of my place. And that's really what I want to talk about in a preface sense of what I really want to talk about. <laughs> um, this season I'm in. And I just want to be transparent. I just want to, again, this is often just kind of a peek into my life and like what the Lord is showing me in my household. Um, I just believe, I believe it can at least possibly, it holds the potential to encourage us and stir us to good works. <laughs> One another, be stirred. Real life, ups, downs, good, bad, whatever we deem it. But I've been very open to just say, even in a recording not long ago, several weeks back, I just have this, this feeling in me, this drive, this desire to be in a position, in a place where... I do have a voice, I do have a, a tangible purpose in the lives of others, a, a, a voice crying out in the wilderness in my age, but just a real insatiable hunger to be around others who are more spiritually mature than me, further along in the journey than I presently am. Households that have already been through this stage of life that I'm presently in and in certain areas entering into. And in the goodness and kindness of the Lord, He's really handed us a gift of that. Some people who are walking in a, in a place in some specific things now that I have been gently led to by the Lord, not us seeking it out, and He has led us to some, to some people who have been walking this journey that I'm beginning, this segment of the journey. More mature in certain areas of the spiritual path. And here's, here's the thing with that. And I knew this, but you, you know, you, we know things and then we experience things and we know them differently. Can we not just agree on that? We know 
before we get to a circumstance, before we get to an event, before we get to whatever that segment of the journey might be, we have a perception of what that might be, and then we're in it, and then we have a now experiential reality about what it really is. And those can oftentimes be very different. They can be tweaked a little bit, or they can sometimes even be completely different than we had expected. Now, this is is not completely different than I expected, but the now moment of the Lord in His goodness leading me to some people who have experienced, again, a facet of the journey in much greater measure than I've known along the lines of where the Lord is moving us, the, tra- the trajectory of our, of our spiritual journey, I'm finding a, a great need for me to walk in a greater level, in a new way, of humility. Because here's the thing, here, here's the wrestling. The wrestling of my mind, the wrestling of my heart, my emotions, is in, in the circumstance now, in, inside the circumstance of actually being placed, although briefly in it so far, just barely in a circumstance where what I prayed has quickly come to pass, I'm finding myself checking my my levels of pride. And here's, here's, the, here's the toughness within that. This journey is not new for me. We have been walking this journey for 15 years, my wife and I, of abandoning our ways, a lifestyle of repentance, walking with a clear conscience before the Lord, laying down the patterns of the world that had permeated our life, The Lord led us to the gift of our son just over eight years ago, and we have been on a journey of a consecrated holy household. And we have implemented a lot of things. We've done, literally done a lot of things based upon the convictions of the Lord that are very abnormal, very rare. the, The longer we walk it out, the more rare I see that it is. And it's very isolating. It's very, it's very, very narrow, the convictions that the Lord has placed upon me to execute in my house. It's foolishness to, to many. I get it. It's okay. It's, it's, I get it. But yet I have to follow these convictions, and in this exact moment of this season of the life that we're in, this part of our journey, I'm really being faced with humbly not defending my spiritual maturity. Because I'm still in a body of flesh, you know. (laughs) I still have the option of offense. I still have that as an option of self-preservation, self-exaltation, even self-explanation. About when someone would come to me, and I'll, I'll create a scenario that, in all honesty, did happen to me recently, where... A brother I met, he he heard 10 seconds of my testimony and branded me to be a certain type of individual. And I will just say, in humility, he was wrong. Um, it's not who I am. And I found that place in me, that check in me of offense, of of, okay, well, how far do I go to clarify, hey, brother, that's not me? Because, see, my whole life I've been, that's always been uh, an issue with me. I don't like being misunderstood, and I don't be like, I don't like being seen as something I'm not. That's that's admittedly been a a very big shortcoming for me. Um, A weakness. I'm too concerned with being understood rightly or being seen for who I really am. And I spent a lot of years of my life defending my position and defending my spiritual maturity. But in the pattern of our life for the last several years, and specifically the last 12 months for sure, you know what? I've I've been 
walking away from that. I've been continually putting that in the grave and like heaping another shovel full of dirt upon it. With effort now, with deliberate walking away from that self-preservation mindset of like, well, this guy needs to know he's wrong. Now, it's not about him being wrong, and I just want to prove him wrong, but like in a self-defensive position, like there's no way he's going to go home thinking I'm that man. I'm not that man. Now, I'm not, (laughs) and that's the hard part, and I guess that's what I'm getting at. I know that I'm not that man. I'm not what I was presumed to be. That's not prideful now. That's the amazing acknowledgement of the work of the Lord in my life. I'm not that. But my examination has been, well, what is it, though, in me that can't stand thinking that that guy thinks of me that way? That's the real issue. The issue isn't, well, am I or am I not that type of person? I know I'm not. My identity is in the Lord. Literally. Like, he's my defender. He is my rock. He's my shield. He, I am in him. He's my abode. I'm under his banner. I am within the sun. All the things I, I went through and experienced that the Lord taught us in our immersion. You know, it's all in the water, brother. <laughs> it's all in the water. Now, I did make it clear. I felt okay. But to just say, you know, brother, that's, that's not me now. That's not me. Um, <laughs> I have asked myself in humility and willingness to give myself to the Lord, was I wrong? Like, was my response based in pride and, and, and self-explanation? Making it clear that, oh no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mature man. Like, because I didn't go where I would have gone years ago. I could have I could have like brought out an assault rifle of response of like justifying who I really am even in Christ. No, brother, listen to this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the assault rifle of self-justification. <laughs> you need to know the account of the Lord's hand on my life for the last 15 years. I'm going to dispel every last inkling you might have of who you think I am. And make it clear that I'm not. Now, praise the Lord I didn't do that. That alone is worth just stopping. God, thank you. Thank you I'm not like that anymore to the point of like really getting in my flesh and being out of of control. But I've just really been asking myself since that day a few days ago, the wrestlings of my heart. Because in in specificity and and I can already tell you now, I'm not going to get to the verse and everything I was going to talk about. That's going to have to be another, another uh, episode. But I've really been examining myself about, all right, Lord, do I really want what I'm asking? I know that in my heart of hearts I do. I know, I know, I mean, for years, I've been looking for spiritual fathers. I've been looking for men who are spirit-led men, who are confident of who they are in Christ, yet humble. And I'm telling you, humility, if I don't see humility, I'm out the door. I'm just just honest. If I don't see the fruit of humility in a man's life, I do not care what he knows. I don't care what he knows. I don't care what level of revelation he's had. I don't care what level of understanding he walks in. It means nothing to me if I don't see humility. If I don't see a humble, contrite heart, I'm out the door, friends. I'm out the door. I'm done. And maybe that's too limiting and the Lord needs to teach me and help me with that. But to me, that is the attribute of the of the Christ man. Okay? Yeshua Messiah, the 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 Lord of Lords, King of Kings, High Priest, seated upon the thrones of all heaven and earth, lowered himself to become a human. And not just a human, but a birthed as a child. He came in the weakest way possible, and we know this, yet he had no arrogance, no pride, no no need to show off what he knows, zero. So we know it's possible. We know it's possible to contain the wisdom of God, even the ancient truths. Yeshua himself taught us that it's possible to simultaneously hold the deepest level of revelation of being 
an Emmanuel God-man, yet still walk completely abased as a suffering servant unto every man. And I'm telling you, that is the mark of the man I want to come under and come alongside. That's the mark of a God-man. Scripturally now, look at Paul. Paul was a regenerated man who encountered the Messiah. He was blinded to everything he knew, came out on the other side, after literally being prostrate on the road before the Messiah, and he throws off every single attribute that made him who he was. The law keeper of law keepers now. We've talked about this before. He counted all of that garbage in order to be a suffering servant himself unto the gospel of the Messiah. Abandoned his intellect, abandoned his wisdom. I mean, think about the letters and and then when he would go see people in person. He was not impressive in person. That's what the people always gave him a hard time about because his letters, they would say in summary, boy, you think you're something in your letters. You're bold. You're really hard on us. You're just like, wow, you're telling us how it is. But in person, like, you know, we're just not impressed. I believe he understood, he understood who he was. He knew who he was. Now, I think he could have gone and annihilated everybody all the time. I think he could have laid them low. Well, why? Because he lived the abandoned servant life. He had all the knowledge. He had all the wisdom. He had all the understanding Yet he encountered Messiah, and all those things now found their proper place. They found their proper place, and of course, God for sure, without any wondering or question, allowed those things to come out, measured out, if you will, with power and substance, so much so that it's made it all the way down to our hands today to teach us, to train us. I would say to remind us, listen, Gain wisdom. We see that in the scriptures. Gain wisdom. Wisdom's crying out from the corner amongst all the clamor of the world, all the declarations of the patterns of the world. Friend, I would say, I would say that even those who are very wise are, if they're not careful, let's just say they will hold the potential if they're not careful, to gain the wisdom add the wisdom to the life, but then walk back out amongst the city streets of the world. And friends, that's not the goal. I would say, metaphorically, I can see this in my imagination. When wisdom's calling out, like we see in the Proverbs, she's crying out, come to me, come to me. I remember a couple years ago, maybe, man, maybe seven, eight years ago now that I think about it, I had this vision like a legit vision of the woman wisdom calling out on the on the corner of the city street and i saw all these signs and women that were very provocative coming out of these doorways of these other buildings along the same road and they were loud they were demanding attention their message was appealing to the natural man their voices carried and wisdom was down the road on a corner and she was calling out but it was much different than the patterns of the world ladies she was covered she was hidden she she wanted to be revealed but you had to go to her and you had to hear her words and you had to respond to what she was saying Because it's not going to be delivered the same way now. But I would say, to use this this vision, if you will, this part specifically, I believe the goal is to pull up a chair and sit there and to make that our dwelling for the rest of our days. Because, friends, it means nothing if we gain all this wisdom, if we gain all this understanding towards the ancient ways of God, and then return to the patterns of the world with that wisdom and understanding. 
and still tolerate the patterns of the world in our life. I'm also doing a study that's getting longer than I expected. It's taking forever about the mixing of the people of God. The pagan temple worship has nothing to do with Christmas. Don't get worried. About the mixing, I would say in every flavor, every movement, every denomination, every sect of believers, there is presently a mixing. I have not been a part of any movement, any gathering of people, any type of Christianity, whether it's brand new progressive or ancient Torah-based um, messianic or, or otherwise, I am seeing the same pattern throughout it all. And friends, we've got to be careful. We in no way can add so much understanding and wisdom that we think that we are free and have nothing else to continue to walk out away from. There will be always, always, always within us the draw and the lure of the world. And we need to constantly examine, I don't care what level we are in. We have to step back and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Search me. Know me. Try me. Examine me. See if there's any wicked way in me because you know what? I know that there is. I know that there is in truth. I may not know in understanding, but please, Lord, see. And we could, be, we could rightly say, help me with the rest of the wicked ways that still yet remain in me. Help me, God. Reveal them to me. Not through my understanding now through a supernatural spiritual response to the suffering servant, humble, even yet mature man of God in the pattern of the Messiah. And so in this moment of my life, I am really, I'm deliberately giving myself to feeling like a kindergartner. In my, in my past experiences, in most congregations, gatherings, whatever, everything we've been a part of, I'm, I'm just going to be honest, generally, I would feel, and, and, and again, and listen to what I'm saying in humility, can we just not step back and say most of the church operates on a very superficial elementary level? Let's just start with that reality. That is absolutely true. I don't know who would really argue with that. We just stay up here at the top, and we don't go any deeper. Well, you'll run people off. Nobody can keep up. That's too deep. That's too much. I don't have time for that. You know. And so I would say, for most of my life, just the way God designed me now, that's never satisfied me. I've always been odd. I've always been too much. I've always been too serious, too intense. And so that's kind of been the pattern of my life, and I, I have adjusted my life accordingly. And so, well, until the last couple of years, I always felt very alone in that. Until the last four years specifically, aligning myself with, with a couple families, a few families, and specifically another brother of like a, a joint tenacity for the Lord and for the kingdom. yet still very isolated because there weren't many of us. <laughs> and so I have to start turning this towards a conclusion. So in this exact moment I sit, I couldn't sleep last night. We went to bed early. I got up at 1130 and I was up for a good, good chunk of the night, just praying, crying out to the Lord to help me, change me. I need something. I need help. I need help, Lord. I cannot humble myself rightly in this present circumstance of my life unless you help me, unless you fuel me to humility. You are my source because here's the thing. Here, let, may I bring this to a culmination of what I'm saying? I know for certain I have a call upon my life. I've known it my whole life. 
the Lord has had me on a journey of, of giving myself to it in, in incrementally more measure for the last 15 years. In the last several years, it's gotten real heavy. And this calendar year, 2019, that's fixing to wrap up, it's become crystal clear. There is a call on my life. We can't argue calls on men's life. We read the accounts of Scripture, and we now don't have time to go through the list of men, specific men now, called to specific tasks throughout all the ages to accomplish God's purposes on the earth. Let's not shirk away from that by, well, brother, you're just making it all about you. No, I want all that the Lord has created me to be. I want it all. I want to perform the tasks that he has created me for this very hour, for this very moment, in this geographical location, for this age. And so I know for certain I have a certain call into my, uh, in my life, on my life. I know that. I have had encounters with the Lord that are very specific, and, and I just, I know that. It's unshakable. It's sure. It's, it's, it's a rightful confidence. It's a humble confidence that, you know what? I have been into the most holy place. I know the Creator. I worship Him. As he is. I know him. Now, do I know him fully, completely? No. Why do we always have to back out and make sure everybody knows what, well, make sure you know you're not, you know, I don't even want to go there. And so now I'm taking all that I am, again, let's be clear, the gift of God in my life, nothing I have done other than what? Respond to, I respond to the, to the voice of my shepherd. He speaks, I do it. I do what I, he, what I see the Father do. I speak what I hear Him speak. That's my life. To perfection, no, but that is what I do. I give myself to that with great motivation. And so now, here I am, the Lord has brought this situation where normally I'm, I'm running in the 10th grade with my peers and I'm in kindergarten along certain matters now. And that's the, that's the thing. In certain areas. And it's, it's I don't want to just say it's hard for me because that's so, that's so trivial. Oh, it's just hard, brother. It's so That's not it at all. That's not at all what I'm saying. It is a training season for me and my wife. The Lord spoke to that to my wife about five months ago, that we are entering into a season of learning and being taught and trained. We continue to teach, we continue to train, we continue to do what we've been doing for years. The Lord has instilled great things in us that are coming out in great measure. But it's also a season of humble learning and submission to be trained in areas that we are yet ignorant in. And so, like, here's the thing. I'm going to close the door. Friends, are you doing that? Are you in a circumstance of the give and take of the kingdom? Are you training and teaching in what? In the things that you have been given as a gift of God to impart into another. It's the complexity of the kingdom. It's the puzzle pieces of the kingdom reality that there are things placed literally within me that not everyone knows that not everyone understands, that not everyone has even received from the Lord yet, that in His goodness of His plan working through flesh man, the government of God reality, that it comes through man, it comes through men to men. It doesn't negate the encounter with God. It doesn't, it doesn't remove the, the, the logos of God coming through the written word, through the Holy Spirit through all these other ways that God declares His Word. But it is a primary component pattern that we see in the Scripture from day one where the kingdom is perpetuated through man. We multiply the kingdom. Now, there, is, there are volumes of books, if you will, that the Lord has written upon the tablet of my heart that I have to share. And there are those that are lacking that brother may be in you. And so this, to me, this rightly annihilates the lording over reality. Well, 
you know more about Torah than me, so ho-hum, just teach me. I don't know anything. Well, you know more about the revelation of regeneration. Well, I was saved, so you're better than me. You understand what I'm saying? We, in our, in our natural thinking, in our, in our natural, very limited view of one another, we lessen the kingdom. Because we have this propensity to deny giving anyone any sort of an accolade or recognition of the work of God in their life because, well, they might think that I'm making that all about them and there's no way I'm going to exalt them. It's all about God. It's God's sovereign act. Well, here's the thing, y'all. I am moved when I see a man who has responded now to the gift of God given to that man. That's what I want to see. I don't care about your intellect. I don't care about the knowledge that you have. I don't care about your wisdom towards things that I'm even yet now ignorant of, apart from seeing a regenerated Christ man in humility who understands that every single thing we possess in God, every, listen to what I'm saying, friend, every single thing you possess of God whether it's understanding, whether it's revelation, even encounter experiential times with the Lord, life-changing events, visions, dreams, all these things that we want to possess and say are ours, friends, none of this is ours to possess. Every single bit of it is a gift from eternal Yahweh, Creator God. It's all His. It's from Him. It's back to Him. It's for Him. It's from Him, and it returns back to Him as an offering and not a possession. I want to be like that. God has given me a gift of many, many, many volumes in the library of His wisdom, of His counsel, of His revelatory understanding of many things. Yet I'm lacking. The library is not complete. I'm in need. Friend, I'm in need of something you possess. But let's be ones who deliver that in, in a vessel of humility, lowered and abased together unto Yahweh eternal. Everything we possess, friends, is not our own. I don't care what we did to earn it, to get it, to understand it. It's the hand of God upon every man to have any ounce of understanding towards the eternal purposes of God himself. It is not ours to own, possess, flaunt at all. May we rightly handle the word of truth we've been given. May, may we rightly handle it now. That to me is a sign of a mature man. A mature man is not a smart man. A mature man is not a knowledgeable man. A mature man to me in the kingdom is the man who says, hey, excuse me, brother, you sit here I'm going to the back of the room. You see that chair back there in the corner in the dark? I'm going back there, excuse me. In true humility, that's my place. Friend, sit here. Sit by the master. I know my place. He will exalt me in his time. In whatever way he sees fit now, it's not up to me. I'm not going to take my place. I'm not going to demand my place. I am going to take the lower place. Friend, would you do likewise today? In your gaining wisdom, in your understanding, in your studies, in your teaching, in your training, be a servant. Be a lowly servant. We can do both. How? The pattern of the Messiah. Carved out for us to walk. Carved out for us, friends. It's already been done. The forerunner Messiah, the firstborn of many brethren, he's already done it. We follow him, we can do it. Please do it today. The body of Christ is dependent on us, friends. The kingdom will not just show up descending and falling from the sky like manna. It's coming through men. It's coming through men who know the master. Humble servants who know the master. Amen.